Chris Kikaminikin, a Tyneside hardman, left his loved ones in October 1986 and never returned home. Kicker, as called by friends, had a colourful past. A former paratrooper and Navy seaman, he had travelled the world before settling back into his hometown of Newcastle. He was also a physically dangerous man, if crossed, and many in Newcastle feared him. His reputation as a hard man is undoubted. It is no secret within the underworld of Newcastle he was involved with a major armed robbery gang, committing several jobs with them. His brother was also a member of this team. The firm of robbers were made up of a mix of old school villains and new, ruthless younger team, and it is rumoured through family and Masonic connections had access to corrupt police. Through these corrupt officers, they had allegedly obtained a list of lucrative robbery targets. At this time, there were only two firms in Tyneside capable or willing to commit armed robberies, and their gang based in Newcastle were proficient with military expertise within their ranks. According to one seasoned former villain, to a popular North East podcast reporter, Paddy Conroy, suggests it was an internal gang feud that led to his disappearance. Before looking at Paddy Conroy's theory, I'll give people who don't know of Conroy a snapshot of his background. Paddy Conroy is inscribed in the fabric of the North East, and the huge Conroy clan enjoyed popularity within the West End of Newcastle when he was deemed wrongly arrested for an alleged assault on a policeman. The whole community came out to demand his release, with his right hand man Michael Bull Bullock sitting up on a bridge in protest. Due to persistent attention from the police, Paddy says in interviews he was forced into a world of criminality, but was wrongly convicted for crimes that he later cleared his name on through lie detector tests claiming a moral victory. He was also once the UK's most wanted man after a daring prison escape that he has since said he knew nothing about until his co-accused jumped into action. Since his last prison stint, Paddy ran legit businesses until an unfounded rumour destroyed his family's life and his reputation which up until the present day he fights and seeks to rectify for his popular podcast which has literally thousands of views daily. On one of his lives, Paddy suggests a theory he believes to be true regarding Kicker, which also involves another man who also vanished some years later, Michael Strawn. It's important to note that these theories are not fact, but it does seem odd that there hasn't been more coverage in the newspapers or effort from Northumberland Police to look into the disappearance of Kicker in contrast to that of Michael Strawn. The alleged theory is that for some reason, Chris Kicker Minikin had a separation from the gang not long before his disappearance. Looking at the newspaper reports from the time, the reason could have been the fact he was on a conspiracy to rob charge and wanted to remain low key. There was only one problem. According to Paddy, he still wanted his share of any robberies on the list. This gang were tough, hardened criminals, but not one of them could challenge Kicker when it came to a physical confrontation, and he used that to his advantage to allegedly pressure them in paying him a share of jobs he did not take part in. If this is correct, such a situation was not going to last forever, especially when you take into consideration villains don't tend to be charitable by nature when it comes to money they have risked their liberty for. After a short while, demands for payments were refused by the gang, which set about a turn of events that would ultimately lead to him going missing, according to this theory. Kicker allegedly started doorstepping the members of the gang in a bid to pressure them to pay him money stabbing one member in the bath after storming the house and another breaking his jaw in a pub in the centre of town. It seemed that he was on a one-man mission to enforce his will on the other members of the firm and if this true, it seems a very dangerous plan. In a separate incident, Kicker also allegedly fell out with Michael Strawn's family member and went to his house with a friend to remonstrate. He had not counted on a man mounting like Strawn to burst through the door allegedly with a knife and cut up Kicker's friend. Although Michael Strawn is said to be a gentle giant, he was very protective over his family and wouldn't have thought twice using his huge frame and tie boxing background to keep them safe. Amongst these dramatic weeks, the theory goes that there was a decision to have Kicker eliminated, but when dealing with a man of his capabilities, there would have had to have been an element of surprise, as it would not have been an easy job overpowering him. It seems that he was picked up on the day he disappeared by people he either trusted or he believed wouldn't dare cross him. Whatever the case, he disappeared, and Paddy Conley suggests it was people linked to the robbery gang. The other slim possibility is that he disappeared of free will, but it doesn't seem plausible for the following reasons. 
If Chris had left to go on the run, he would have needed his passport and banking cards, etc. But he did not take anything with him. He would also have undoubtedly said goodbye to his loved ones, or at least give them some idea to what the plan was. You could argue that he would not want to use any official IDs or bank accounts so as not to leave a paper trail. He may have secured cash and fake ideas, IDs and wanted to make it look like something sinister had happened to him, but this is fanciful thinking at best. But what of the connection to Michael Strawn and his disappearance some years later? The case of Michael is even more mysterious, as he was not deemed a serious player in the underworld, so why would he be taken away and killed? In steps, in steps, sorry, Don Graham, as the plot thickens. Graham, or the pressed up Prince of Darkness, was jailed for the murder of his lover, Janet Brown, who also disappeared without a trace in June 2005. Graham stripped Janet of all her belongings and wealth, and her parents also when they died after her disappearance. Building Society workers alerted the police and he was found guilty of her murder after a trial. I believe he still claims he's innocent, but the evidence would say otherwise. What is interesting is the trial judge's comments. The trial judge said Miss Brown, whose body had never been found, may have been dumped in a deep pit or mine shaft by former JCP digger driver, Graham. Apparently the land that was owned by Janet Brown and subsequently Graham had a vast amount of area with mine shafts and pits around them that could potentially be where Graham buried Janet Brown. This leads to Paddy Conway's theory that Kicker's body would have also been dumped down one of the mine shafts due to some of the robbery gang's connections with Graham. Strawn, Paddy suggests, could have helped them dispose of the body due to his issues with Kicker, and they got rid of Strawn also to tie up loose ends. Looking at the murder of Janet Brown that was allegedly committed in 2005, you'd have to investigate back to the 80s to see if Graham did have access to that land at the time of Kicker's dis disappearance to give the theory merit. The sad truth is, that at this time there's no factual evidence of these claims and it's unclear how far the police went searching for Janet Brown. Perhaps the logistics of unearthing these deep mine shafts are too problematic for the police to go any further and the mystery around these three poor souls disappearance will stay hidden deep within the grounds. <laughs>